Network products require data to be synchronized, sometimes between platforms that are great distances away. Ethernet has provided one way to link products together in a single, reliable network. Now, audio video bridging, or AVB, and time-sensitive networking, or TSN systems, are enhancing the capabilities of Ethernet, making it possible to synchronize devices in some of the harshest environments on Earth or in space. In this video, we will hear from DornaWorks FPGA engineer Andrew Dezao, who will walk us through the differences and benefits of AVB and TSN, how these technologies are used in DornaWorks networking demo, and how they can enable real-life solutions for your development team. What are AVB and TSN? So AVB and TSN are both uh, sets of networking standards. Uh, so starting with AVB, it's um, a set of basically four standards that combine to do bandwidth partitioning of packets. So it starts with time synchronization, which is the PTP side to basically have all devices on the network synchronized to each other in time. Uh, then on top of that, it adds uh, bandwidth shaping so that each uh, stream or class can have its own bandwidth reserved for it. Uh, so it always has, it has two benefits, the ability for uh, there are always to be bandwidth allocated for that stream, as well as um, breaking up the burstiness, um, which can help uh, downstream devices handling that data more easily. Uh, on the, the TSN side adds uh, a number more standards than that, but from the high level, TSN does time partitioning, whereas AVB did bandwidth partitioning. So you have a slice of time that is yours to transmit, and then for the rest of time, you're not allowed to transmit. So the, the those two can be combined. It's not TSN replacing ABB, it's TSN builds on ABB. So you can actually do both of those at the same time to do bandwidth partitioning and time partitioning at the same time, which allows for a wide variety of uh, applications uh, to schedule network traffic. How are ABB and TSN used in DornaWorks networking demo? One thing that came around with ABB as well is the idea of strict priority scheduling and that there are these eight QoS queues, each of which can be scheduled using the ABB bandwidth partitioning, the TSN time partitioning, as well as just strict priority. So basically the, the highest QoS gets to transmit first. And there's no guarantees as far as bandwidth or time, which is where those other standards come in. So those three scheduling methods are what we are showing off in our demo. So we start with just doing strict priority scheduling to basically show that in the event that multiple queues are trying to transmit at once, we're always giving priority to the highest queue, to the highest priority queue. Um, when we add ABB, then we're testing the credit shaping where we can basically blast 100% bandwidth at this and we should see it being cut off to whatever bandwidth it's being allocated to. Um, and we, we do that between multiple queues that each have different amounts of bandwidth allocated to it. So we can see that both queues are able to transmit their full bandwidth and neither are being starved. After that, we combine credit shaping and the strict priority. Basically, the, the credit shaping traffic will get the highest priority to make sure that its bandwidth allocation is met. And then after that, we can see that the remaining traffic is filled with strict priority traffic. From there, we went to the TSN test, the time partitioning test to basically say that we are scheduling traffic in these particular times and we check the PTP timestamps used for time synchronization in the packets to make sure that packets are only being sent when they're allowed to in time. Uh, and then our final set of tests is basically combining all three of those methods together to say that we can bandwidth schedule, we can time schedule, and the strict priority on top of that for when neither of those are used. What applications can I build with ABB or TSN? So when we combine the ABB, TSN, and strict priority, there are really a wide variety of applications because the bandwidth partitioning does really well with asynchronous data. For example, if you have a sensor or an end system that has status messages, but also 
we'll send an urgent message when, hey, I've sent something that needs to be known immediately. Those can both be scheduled on the same network because the status messages can go in a queue that's the TSN gate scheduler, which then will just send those messages when it has time to, while the urgent messages can be the bandwidth scheduling so that that gets out as quick as possible. So it allows for a wide variety of network traffic. You just have to configure your network correctly. You have to know your traffic ahead of time in order to properly configure the network. But if you do have a good idea of what your system looks like, then there's a wide variety of applications that this IP can be used for. What does Dornaworks have on the roadmap for this technology? It's added a whole host of standards, most of which we have not implemented in our IP yet, but are on our roadmap. Uh, for example, the standard FRER frame replication and elimination for reliability basically has packets take redundant paths on the network. So it's really good for high fault tolerance for, say, aviation or other industries where you have to have a high level of criticality. There are standards like that that come along or standards for configuring the whole network so that every device on your network has the same configuration and is all talking the same language. So there's a wide variety of standards out there as well to fit customer needs depending on their application.